It's another miracle. And, and he got, i got to tell you something. He got aggravated with it. He got a little bit angry. What did he say? He goes, you get no more signs. So you got to understand these things are for signs, it said. And he said, you'll get no more signs. You want a sign? I'll give you a sign. Uh, as, as, the, uh, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of earth three days and three nights. He goes, that's what you get for a sign. They were running around. You got a sign from, I'll give you a sign from heaven. When you got up in the morning, it was light out. Yeah. The sun gave you some, something to look at. You want a sign? There's a sign for you. Who controlling that sun? Amen. Who made that sun? Why don't you look at that as a sign? You're all, if you ever hear, give me a sign, God, give me a sign. He says, there's no sign. You're an evil and wicked generation that want those things. Why don't you search for the heart of God? Is what he's saying. Isn't that what you see with people? How many people have dealt with somebody and all they want to tell you about is, I speak in tongues. <laughs> who cares what? Who cares? What does that mean? What does it matter? It will matter nothing what we're doing right now. It will not change your life. Amen. 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 And you know why pe preachers do that? Because you'll keep coming. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I got the I, I got the advantage over. You know why I got the advantage? Because I'm like Josh. I get retirement pay. I don't need that. I, don't get I just tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Shove yeah. it down your throat. <coughs> That's the army way. Amen. I ain't got to be nice to you. Just got to tell you the truth. I'm nice to you anyway. Amen. <laughs> So then in the 13, he, he did what? He gave you a way of life, an excellent way of life. What's that? Instead of being one of them people worried about if I'm going to do this, healing, and all this stuff, why don't you be a person that cares about people like charity? Amen. Why don't you have the truth? When, when charity comes and you get that pure thing of truth, what do you care about signs anymore for? You're not, you, you don't care. You, your focus is on the Lord, not on what you can do. Yeah. Look, people, I hear it all the time. I speak in tongues. It's not about you. It's supposed to be about Jesus Christ. What do we care about you? Why would you? Why would a preacher get up and worry about himself more than he cares about the people and Christ? Just makes you think, people. I heard guys say, oh, "I was in the shower. I spoke for tongues in, for twenty minutes in the shower." You mean you didn't pray for anybody at twenty minutes? You didn't pray for anybody? You just sat there acting like a baby? Can't breathe in tongues. Yeah. Oh man, I'm I'm twenty minutes. I'm running down the road. Jogging, you know what I'm doing the whole time I'm jogging? I'm praying. Amen. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of things going on. Last night, a girl fell through the roof of uh, Watertown Baptist Temple. Hit the, she came through the roof of the auditorium, landed, smashed on the pulpit. What do we need? We need to be praying for stuff like that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen? I, I heard there was a person that they went to the hospital. Now they were on life support. They got to the hospital. Uh, everybody's worried. Who did it? Where was she at? Who gave it to her? What's this? What? These were her friends. I was sitting there saying, I can't even pray for the woman. Yeah, right. They were so worried about who else. Well, putting the blame on somebody, you know what? They didn't even pray for them. I, I want you to understand, God help our society. We don't care about people anymore. We care about blaming somebody and looking better than they do. Yes, right. Shame on us, man. Shame on us. That's the charity. What's that? He says, when charity comes, he told you, he said, look at verse number uh, no, verse number eight, the first three words. Charity never faileth. It never fails. He says, promises fail. I, all these other things, they, they, they fail, but not charity. Look at, look at verse number nine in, in chapter 13. It says, for we know in part. We don't know everything. We know in part. Uh, for we prophesy how in part of what we know. But when that which is perfect has come, which is charity, maturity, that which is done in part, done away with. You don't need to do that anymore. You need to be looking towards other things. And what's that? That's what we're talking about here. Verse number 1 in chapter 14. Let's stand for the reading of the word. Amen? Amen. Good to be saved, isn't it? Amen. And the Bible says in chapter 14, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts but rather that ye may what prophesy 
For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue uh, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men, to edification, to exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but ye don't. But rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except an interpreter that the church may receive edifying. Father, bless thy word. We love you, Lord. Ask you to uh, give us something to our hearts today, Lord Father. Wake us up a little. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have a seat and get into the scripture because I, I can tell you, even when I used to read that scripture, I got to tell you, you sometimes read things through other people's minds. You've been told things. Uh, you've got a preacher and what happens is the preacher, he, he kind of guides you. Sometimes they can be guiding you wrong. That's right. Yep. That's why you need the Lord. You need illumination. You need to, you need to seek the Lord for these things. Why? Well, I'm a liar, right? Yeah, I can lie to you. I don't like to, but I go to the scripture instead. That's why we go scripture by scripture. That way, if I'm lying to you, you see it right there. Most preachers, what do they do? I can tell you how they do it. We'll go to a scripture, one scripture over here. We'll go to one scripture over here. And what he's doing is he has an opinion, and he's trying to support his opinion. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, just so you know, my opinions probably stink. <laughs> But he says, follow after charity. If you have charity, you don't need any of this stuff. And he says, and desire spiritual gifts. Okay? Uh, now watch. He says, but rather that ye may what? Prophesy. So if somebody actually does come up to you and says, oh, I speak in tongues. Well, I prophesy better than you. If they really believe that stuff, they really got to uh, want to do that story. Okay? Just so you know, I've had every preacher in this town. Try and play that stuff with me. Just so you know, I know them all. They've come around to me. I can't believe you don't believe anybody speaks in tongues. And I used to say to them, I don't believe you can either. <laughs> you can speak English. Got anything else? Spanish, French, whatever. Are you trying to tell me that you go around going, hey, yeah, 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 and you're good? <laughs> That's good with God. Do that to your parents when you've done something wrong. If it's that spiritual, do it to them. Did you let the dog out and the dog ran away? And then run away now. How's that going to work? It's going to do well? I don't know about you, but my dad would have been, he would have broke his right foot up me. <laughs> for saying one of those things. How many people have heard this? Mind your tongue. Yeah. yeah. Well, how does that fit in? How's that fit in, people? All right, he says, follow after charity. Follow after charity. Be a charitable person. Okay? Uh, God gave you these, if he gave you these gifts, what's that? He wants you to give them freely. Do them in charity. You know, look, if I had the gift of real healing that I could heal physically and just not spiritually, which he gave me the spiritual gifts, if he actually gave me the physical gifts like Jesus had in the apostles, why would I not be down there at the hospital healing everybody? He gave me that gift physically. He gave me that gift. Why should I? Why? Why would? Oh, why would a preacher take a take a go run an arena and make people pay to see it? Why does he just go up to every hospital, go into the oncology area where people are dying of cancer, uh, scribbling down uh, to almost nothing? Why would you not be merciful and pitiful to those people and touch them and get them healed? Amen. Because he can't. They can only work with the guy's psyche. Make him believe something he doesn't even that isn't even true. But you'll notice it says, but rather prophesy. Now hold on that, hold on that verse, because it's going to be answered soon. He says, Well, look, why is this? Why is this thing? Remember I said when the Bible, when you see the verse and it starts out with four, or you get a four statement, what do you say? Why? Why before it? Because it's going to answer that question. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you prophesy. Why is that? For he that speaketh with an unknown tongue speaketh unto men. 
Okay? He, he speaketh not unto men. Nobody can understand him. Now watch. Unknown. Unknown. I want to go into the word unknown. Well, if you got a word, don't you go and do a little analysis in what God's actually talking about? Watch this. Go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. We're going to look at the word unknown. Because he said an unknown tongue. Let's look at that word, unknown. Acts chapter 17. And in Acts chapter... Acts chapter 17, we're going to start down at verse number uh, 22. 17, 22. Now Paul, he's, uh, he's in Greece right now. And he's in the midst of the people. And it says in verse 22, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too what? Superstitious. You're too superstitious. Anybody here deal with anybody superstitious? I'm Greek. I deal with every everybody I deal with in my family was superstitious. How many people here are Italian? How many superstitious people got in your family there? Huh? Lots, huh? Right? You know, with the little beads and all that stuff. You know, my family. I mean, they got them on their they got them on their rear view mirrors, and when they get nervous, they're superstitious. Superstition. They do it. They believe in that stuff. Uh, look, I want a relationship with God. Okay, pray Mary. Uh, uh, you know, hail Mary, full of grace, blessed be the fruit of the womb, or whatever they're saying, tic-tac-toe, three in a row. You know what that is? That's superstition, people. You're trying to get God's attention the wrong way. You're going to turn around and you're going to pray to somebody who's not a mediator. The Bible says there's one God and one mediator between God and men, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. You want to get to God, you go through Jesus Christ, not Mary. Right. Mary, pray for us. She doesn't even know you're alive. She's not omnipresent. She's not all knowledge. Only Christ is. He's God. She's not. You know what she is? She's she, she's a good woman. She's a good woman. She was picked. She's a chosen tool. Just like you are. You're a chosen tool for what? To tell people about Christ, she's a chosen tool to bring forth the Messiah physically. Amen. Amen. She was a tool that was used. And don't think Jesus didn't know it, because why? He didn't say, he didn't turn around, he called her woman most of the time. Why? He knew you were gonna, people were going to come along later on and do crazy things. One lady walked up to Jesus, she turns around and she goes, Blessed be, blessed be the, the patch that thou hast sucked. We're mature now. And you know what the, nobody turns around and says? He says, why don't you rejoice that your name's written in heaven? Amen. Amen. Because that ain't going to get you anywhere where, where, where he was raised. It's where he died. Yeah. It's about the death of Jesus Christ that did everything. There's only two gospel accounts where he actually mentions his birth. Anybody here know the exact date? You all know each other. Why don't you know Jesus? He's important, right? Yeah. Right. You know why you don't know? Because he didn't tell you. He didn't want that to be the important day. Right. He wants the important day to be the day for you that he died on the cross and made things for you to open the way for you to get to him. Amen. 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 That's yeah, that's yeah, got you saved. So the word unknown. Unknown, what's that? There is an at, look at verse number of Acts chapter 17. Now look at 23. Verse 23, it says, For I passed by and beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription to the Unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Paul is using a statue they put out there. They said, to the unknown God. We're, what we're doing is, we're covering all bases, just in case I forgot something. Got a God of the water, got a God of the sky, got a God of the sun, got a God of this. We better get something. Just in case we missed anything, we got a God over here. Amen. Okay? That's what, he, that's what the Greeks were doing. He says, you're too superstitious. But I'll tell you what, I know a God you don't know. And that's what Paul's doing. What? There's an actual unknown God. What's that? Their actual mind sees that. There's an unknown God for them. So for them, it's something that's actually there, an unknown God. But Paul's going to use it a different way. Okay, go to uh, Galatians chapter 1. 
It's unknown. There's a God out there. There's, there. You guys don't realize there's a God out there, you Greeks. And guess what? You don't know him now. And I'm going to proclaim him to you. There really is a God. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Look down and uh, let's start in verse number 20, 21. Now watch, he says, afterwards I came in, this is Paul speaking again, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Now watch, and was unknown. I was unknown, was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. So Paul, nobody knew him. That's what it's saying, right? But he is he a real person? Yes. Yeah, just they didn't know him. When I met Josh the first time, he walked in. I didn't even know who he was. What's he doing here? Okay, I didn't know the guy. And he walked up and he said, hi, I'm Josh. I said, hey, Josh, what did I do? I put it now a name with the face, a name with the person. What's that now? He's no longer unknown to me. He's now Josh. See how simple that is? Guys, I complicate the obvious. Complicating the obvious. Uh, it's like this. A tongue is a language. It's a real language, and it's a language on this earth. Uh, there are some people that speak, uh, uh, they speak French. Some people speak Greek. Some people speak uh, Bostonian or whatever it is. I don't know. But guess what? When that person comes up to me, and they start speaking, I have no idea what they're saying, do I? I have no idea if somebody came from Zimbabwe and spoke some kind of tribal language, would I know what they were saying? No. It's an unknown tongue to me. Mm -hmm. Now, if he turns around to me and says, I'm speaking in Swahili, I know what the tongue is, don't I? It's now a known tongue. Okay? What I'm trying to say to you, it's unknown to the hearer, not the speaker. Okay. Unknown to the hearer, not the speaker. I, I, my favorite... A comedy thing is uh, when people with an unknown tongue come up to you and they start speaking to you. Everybody ever hear that? Have that happen? Like around here, we get French Canadians that come down and they try to speak to you and you're standing there going like this. I got a question for you. Why do you start speaking louder and slower? Because. Oh, stop it, Julie. Don't make an excuse. <laughs> you look like a bunch. You look like fools. But seriously, it's a, it's the greatest comedy show to me. Somebody comes up and they say, oh, so, and you're going like this. The bus is over there. Okay, now, here's the best part of that comedy. You go over to France. Yeah. Hey, do you guys know where the bus is? Of what? Du play not go job. How'd you do? You get what I'm saying? That's just funny stuff. Amen. It's like somebody's blind and... Somebody's blind, you start speaking slow to them. <laughs> I'm blind, I'm not deaf. <laughs> Amen. It just happens all the time. I think it's funny. Yeah. Okay? But here's what he says. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, a French tongue, any tongue, he says he speaketh not unto men. Why? Nobody understands him. But speaketh to who? He speaks unto God. Why is that? Why is he speaking unto God? Because God knows every language. If you're speaking to him, what do you think? God doesn't know the language he made him. He knows exactly what the languages are. Right. So they, he says you can only speak to God that way. For no man understandeth him. Watch. How being in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Uh, I'm going to give a shot. What did I say? I have no idea. See? I'm speaking in a mystery as far as it is to her. Uh, hey, look. Give me 20 minutes with somebody who thinks they speak to that stuff. And I'll show you, they don't know one mystery in the Bible. I'll sit there and ask them what the mysteries of the Bible are. How many of you think they'll give them to me? I guarantee they've been spending so much time being an immature little punk saying that stuff that they don't even know the Bible anymore. I'm not trying to look. Don't think I'm trying to be a bully. I just want them to wake up. I still love them. I still talk to them. I still preach to them. I still want them to come into, you know, what we know. Then they could be effective. You, you realize that? Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. He says he does, nobody understands him. 
Verse number three, watch. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto who? Many. Unto men. So they can understand. To what? To edification and exhortation and comfort. What does that sound like? Prophesying is to edification, to build you up. It's to exhortation. Maybe I might have to rebuke you. Maybe I'm just trying to be a good cheerleader to you, to keep you going. Or the last one, comfort. We talk to people to comfort them, okay? Now, you really think that somebody going, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I you really think that's going to comfort you? No, no. How's that going to do with somebody just lost their family? It's not going to do too well, is it? No. What's prophesying? Well, prophesying is preaching. Look at it again. Look at the verse. To what? To build you up. What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to build you up. What else am I trying to do? I'm trying to exhort you to what? Because you've got a life to live out there. I want you to keep going. Amen. Look, there's going to come times that uh, Big Rob back there can't pay his bills. And guess what? He's try he, he needs comfort. Uh, he doesn't need everybody to tell him how to pay his bills. Sometimes he just needs somebody to say, trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. He needs somebody to pray with him, pray for him. Amen. Well, what, you think your friend's telling you all that great advice is going to happen? Mm. Oh, there, that's great. Didn't you ever notice that? Whenever you have a trouble, everybody's like the new, they're like the uh, MD. Yeah. You know, now they're our doctor. Mm -hmm. They're all PhDs. As soon as something comes up, they're all financial MBAs and everything else. You ever notice that? You know what it is? It's called a bunch of nonsense. Sometimes you just need to, look, something goes wrong. Nobody needs to be counseled every time. They just need to be spoken to with comforting words. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they need. Uh, uh, it's not going to help telling them, well, let me tell you all the mysteries of the Bible. No, right now, I just need to be comforted. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another one. Stop trying to solve everybody's problems. You don't like it when everybody's trying to solve yours. So stop trying. Somebody comes up to you and they says they have cancer. Be pitiful and merciful to them first. Don't be telling them about acorn seeds and everything else. Be comforted. I want you to understand something. They've already gotten that from the world. Amen. Why do you have to be like them? Why can't you just be comforted about things? That's what needs to be. You don't need pointing fingers and everything else. People are, people are hurting. Comfort them. Exhort them. This is what you do. You speak to them. That's preaching. Speaking to them to build them up, to, to make them feel good about themselves sometimes. Sometimes even to rebuke them so they're not doing things that, they are, that they're doing that time. And then what? Comforting them. To let them understand you care. Now look, at now thinking that way, reading it really the way it is, it changes everything, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Why? Look at verse number four. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth who? Himself. Himself. Am I right, Miss Adrian? Don't they love to pat themselves in the back? She came from that. Himself. Right, buddy? <laughs> they edify who? Themselves. themselves. I speak in tongues. You just don't understand. I got this gift. I hear it all the time. I got people that are they're, they're, they're like living a, a devilish life. They come up to me, my hands heal. You a doctor? No. Yeah, right. I can see God just all over you saying, yeah, I'm going to put you out on the field. <laughs> You're going to represent me. A, uh, it edifies you. It doesn't edify God. He says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue... He can only get a, he can edifies himself. Watch this. But he that prophesied, he that's preaching, he edifies who? The church. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm talking to you, ain't I? You're getting something from it, aren't you? Amen. Okay? He says, verse 5, I would that all you speak with uh, tongues, uh, but you all don't. Because you don't, is what he's saying. Because you don't. You, hey, how many here know another language? Put your hand down, Julie. Listen, I did French in school. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Can okay. I know All right. I sh okay, here you go. Picanis. Isikala. I don't know that one. Most fine. 
Okay. Just so you know, I just spoke in Greek. Anybody know what I said? No. That that was unknown to you, wasn't it? Okay. I'm speaking in a tongue, people. It's called Greek, and none of you knew, but me and the Lord. Amen. Amen. I've done nothing to help you, have I? Nope. Get over yourself. When a guy gets up to, and just so you know, there's preachers that do this one. Well, you know, they read a passage of the Bible and they turn around and go like this. Well, in the Greek it says this, and in the Hebrew it really means this, and in this it means... What did that do for you? You learned a Greek word, you learned the Hebrew word, that's about it. You've learned nothing from it that you're sitting there going like this. Look at that guy up there, he's correcting the book. Well, he must know what he's doing. He's able to correct the book. So I'll listen to him. That's why they're doing it. The worst place, I always say, the worst place you can actually go to learn how to be uh, a dumb as a preacher, go to a Bible college. <gasps> yeah, go to a Bible college because that's all they do. They just turn around and teach you how to correct God's book. You don't need to correct his book. You need to read it. If God wrote it, you need to read it. You don't correct him. He corrects you. He's, look, it's like this, people. If you believe, this book is God's word. Like it or not, you can do all the experiments. You can do everything out there. God actually gave you this book from heaven. I can prove it in mathematical formulas to you. But that has nothing to do with it. You've got to believe it here. Now, here's what a, here's what a preacher can do to you. Yeah, this book is good, but you really need the Greek and the Hebrew back here. I know Greek words, and I know Hebrew words. Okay, so what he's really saying is, don't trust this. And you don't know that, so who do you got to trust? Him. He's made himself God. Yep. Anybody been there where they do that? The Greek word means this. The Bible, this word means that. This, why don't you just tell them, you've got a dictionary at home. Go to the dictionary. You all know the right book that you should be reading. Stop reading those other Bibles. They're junk. Just sit with me for about 20 minutes on another Bible. After about 20 minutes, if it ain't out of your hand thrown in the trash, I don't know what's going to go on. Because I'll tell you right now, most of the other Bibles call Satan Christ, and I can prove it every time. They call Satan the morning star. Right there in Isaiah chapter 14. The lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Who's that? That's Jesus. Amen. Would you read a book that calls Satan Jesus and Jesus Christ? No, you wouldn't. So why you, when you get shown it, do what you said. I wouldn't read it. Yeah. Walk over, throw it in the trash. Guess what? It ain't profitable to you. Amen? Amen? But you can see how a man can get up here and mislead you like that? Don't be misled. This is an important part of the Bible because... I don't want to look. I don't need Candace going out and seeing her friends tomorrow and going, hey, you phony, you don't speak in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, there was a time I was zealous and I did those things. Now I pity the people and I'm merciful to them. Mm -hmm. and I just, I just talk to them about it. Really, well, why don't you talk to people better and maybe you won't have to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Or something in that area. Get a heart for the Lord. So, Looking down again, he says, uh, he, that, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, verse 4, it says, he, he, he had a five just himself. Now watch verse number 5 again. He says, I would that y'all speak in tongues, but rather that you prophesy, talk to people. Why? For greater is he that, that, that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues. Except an interpreter, that says he interpret that the church may receive edifying. I've had foreign preachers come in here. I had a guy that spoke uh, Spanish. The other guy was with him. What did he do? He said that he translated it. Yeah. Interpreter. Not, ooh, 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 ooh. well, he's saying you're going to have a, bit, a male child. <laughs> well, let me ask you something. When they do the gen, whatever reveal, they get the ultrasound. If it's not a, if it's not the, if it's not the same sex, do we get to burn the person too? Because they're a false prophet. They would like to make these prophecies, but they sure don't like to stand up when they're wrong. Amen. Amen. All right, he says, "Greater is he, greater is he that preaches, that prophesies, that tells people about Christ." Uh, verse number six. 
Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? About nothing, right? Now watch. Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. I can't help you unless I'm speaking those things. You know, uh, it's best you speak the things of the Bible and not that other junk. Amen. Verse number seven. And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they uh, give a distinct distinction in, in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? Uh, for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Uh, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, Josh? Okay, in the morning, Reveille, we had Reveille in the service. And then, at the end of the day, they, they do the call. That's it, it's done for the day. We know it's time's over, right? Mm -hmm. And then taps at night means go to sleep. We had sounds. They call us to the back. Get together, right? You know what those things mean. It went right in your head. Charged, didn't it? You know that sound. What he's saying is, if somebody's just piping something out, Rob's back there like, what do I do? <laughs> Brian's over there going, I, I think he's telling me to loosen up this, uh, this radiator over here or something. <laughs> you got all these people thinking different things. Why? You're confusing them. You're not giving good instructions, are you? That's what he's trying to tell you. If, if you're not under the same instruction, nobody's going to do the same thing. Right now, I'm, I'm speaking very simple and plain to you. What's that mean? You're understanding me. Now, do you understand how Paul is bringing this to him? What was happening was this church was doing exactly what those immature churches are doing. They're doing, they're being immature, little babies like romper room. Oh, we can do this, we can do this. Let's roll on the floor and act like an idiot and a fish on the floor. That stuff is crazy stuff. That stuff you see in a mental asylum. Why would you want to do it in church? And let me give you this. Was Jesus not the most spiritual person in the Bible? Can you show me the verse where he did it? He didn't, did he? Isn't that something? And he had the Holy Ghost all over him in Luke chapter 3. It says so. Amen? So that's not the key. Watch. He says, he says uh, so likewise, verse number 9, so likewise, except ye utter by a tongue words easy to be what? Understood. Understood. That's the simplicity of Christ. How shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. You're not saying anything. You're just speaking anything. I don't know what it is. Can you tell me what you wanted to say? I gave you the gospel this morning. How many realize how precise and easy and common that was? I didn't make it hard, did I? Come to Christ. It's that easy, people. Uh, verse, uh, verse number 10. He says, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. Amen? Amen? So many different languages. He says there's so many kinds, okay, in the world. And none of them is without significance. Every language is just a little difference. He says, therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, if I don't know, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Now you understand what's going on. Uh, the other's going like that. We don't understand each other. You can't get anything done. Hey, look, when you're speaking in tongues, go build a house. Go do some construction. How's that going to work for you? It's not. You need something plain. You want somebody that's going to speak plain words to you, simple words to you. Why? Because you can understand with simple words. I'm teaching you the Bible here. You need to learn it. What's that? You need to, you need to get a hold of God. You're going you're gonna to get a hold of him through this book. You're going to learn. You came in here. How many people came in here didn't know much of the Bible? How many you know now? Yeah. You know something now. Amen. That's the goal, people. Know God better. Amen. He says, watch. Uh, keep going with this. He says, 
Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous for spirit of spiritual gifts, I like them, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. What did you get a translator here or something that he can learn the language that can tell you what he's saying? For watch, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, nobody else understands you, but my, watch, but my understanding is what? Unfruitful. Okay, uh, Josh just got up and he started going, ba da dee da dee dee boo 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 dee dee da Glory, hallelujah. Did you know what you just said? What did that tell you? You should understand what you're saying. You're responsible to God for every word that comes out of your mouth. Why would you say something like that? Yeah. How many here don't even, you don't even know if you curse to God? I, 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 have a, I have a friend, he was from China, came into this country, went to a, went to a church. They wanted to go to a revival, went in there, and guess what? They, they, somebody in there started, started doing that. Whatever it is. The guy he turned around and he, he walked, he's, he got mesmerized and walked out. They said, what, what was the problem? He said, I, that guy just said profanity to, to the Lord in Chinese. And how wow. many people would have picked up on that? Wow. You see what I mean? Yeah. You don't know what the guy's saying. What if he's doing that? Oh. What if he is? You have no idea. Hey, what the problem you have is, people, there's the spirit of God, and then there's another spirit. Yep. Which one are you speaking with? There's a maniac of Gadara in the Bible that they couldn't even get him. They didn't know what he was saying. They couldn't get him. They couldn't hold him down. He's the only guy in the Bible that's a charismatic. In Jesus' time. And it was a maniac. They didn't know what he was saying. He's rolling on the ground, uh, try, ripping, and trying to hold him down, and he can't hold him down. There's your guy. He'd be great at a, he'd be great at a charismatic revival. Amen? So let's keep going with this. I only got a few minutes, so stay with me. It says, um, now watch. What is it then? Question, what is it then? I will pray in the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding. Notice that, Josh? Pray with understanding. You have to know what you're saying. He says, also, I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. I sang in tongues last night. What did you say? I don't know. Why not? God said you should have understanding. Verse number 16. Else, watch this. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say, Amen? Adonai, Zaslikapo, Nathani, glory, hallelujah. I don't hear anybody saying amen. Why? You didn't understand a word I just said, did you? Now you understand. How do you know they're not speaking? Yeah. It's not coming from a devil or something. That's the problem. That's she, scary. She caught it right there. There's another spirit somewhere. If it's not God's spirit, it has to be another spirit. I'm going to tell you, don't always think it's the spirit of the devil. It's just the spirit of man. The devil's laughing at them. Yep. He's already got them. He's, got, he's sitting there going, that's stupidity. Just keep going with that one. <laughs> Nothing's getting done. How many people are getting saved? Absolutely none. So what good is it? So what she just said, she's right. Mm -hmm. It's another spirit. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I got candy in the back for you, okay? <laughs> Amen. No, uh, let's get down to verse number 19. He says, um, At thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. For thou verily, truthfully, veracity, thou verily givest thanks well, but... The other is not edified. He doesn't even know what you said. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. He spoke many languages. He's writing in Greek right here. He knew Hebrew. Amen? Amen. Now watch. Hayden, you need this, right? Watch what it says in that verse. It says, yet. Watch. Yet in the church, I had rather speak, how many words? Five. Five words with understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. I'd rather say, look, I'll give you five words. Ye must be born again. Amen. 
That will help you 20 times more than I did the bubble with you. Amen? Amen? You understand what we're talking about here? This is a church that was being immature. This was a church that was acting like children. They had money. That's what happens when a church has money. They start to do crazy things. Because they think they're better than everybody else. I've got to be religious now. Tick, tick, do, 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 do. You just do that. You know? What else you got in your bag of tricks here? You don't need tricks. You need a heart towards the Lord. Amen. He wants to speak to you in common sense language and be plain about it. Amen. Stop trying to be something you're not. Amen? Amen? You've been doing that most of your life, including myself. Before I got saved, before I was preaching and everything, before that, I was a con man. I was a lying con man. I know now not to play that game. Amen? Amen? Better to just have it out in the open. Why? Stop lying now. Look, if you're a liar and we all have a tendency to do that, just stop now. Put it behind you. Don't even worry about going back there. Don't even bring up the past if that's the case. Why? I can tell you people, if I could have years ago, I'd have sold you life insurance and everything else. Mm -hmm. That's me. I was a con man. Now, I got nothing to sell you. I got nothing. I'm just being a friend. I got nothing else. It's ten times better. Why? When we see each other, we have nothing holding us from saying, Hi, how you doing? Everything and speaking civil. I don't I don't want to lust after you. I you, we don't you're not gonna be my girlfriend or God, you're not gonna be you know, we're not gonna do crazy things. I'm not going drinking with you or anything like that. Okay? I'll even help you do stuff around, you know. Uh, uh, people will tell you that. But you gotta understand something. I'm 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 done with all that. Now, if I lie, it's usually because I'm stupid and I don't understand something. Yeah. And that's probably all the time at home. You know how to do that? Yeah, I know how to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for talking to us very simple today, Lord God. We thank you for getting to our hearts, Lord Father. We thank you, Lord, for getting the silly nonsense, Father, and just opening it up and making simple clear to know things out of this Bible. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have that nonsense in the church, Lord Father. We thank you that we have God sense and not nonsense. We thank you, Lord, for speaking plain to us. Lord, let us be people that speak plain to others and, and put away those things that we had in our former life, that old man that creeps up on us, the lying, the angers, uh, the wanting to get back at somebody things. Let us get rid of that kind of stuff and go on for the prize, which is the high calling of Jesus Christ. Again, if you're not saved here today, maybe you, maybe you just need to come to Christ and ask Him, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I receive you as a Savior. That's all you have to do is, is just, with your heart, want the Lord. He wants you. Do you want Him? Uh, Father, I thank you again, and I love you. I just want to serve you here at Bible Baptist Church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.